Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be doing another, not quite a review, just because I don't have a ton of rounds for this thing, but we are gonna be talking about this kel CMR30. Now, this is the first kel that's been on my channel in a while, and it's also one that I've wanted to get on the channel for a while. Um, if you guys don't know, my first ever video was on a kel PF9. Um, now, I've learned a lot since I did that video uh, my techniques have changed a lot since I've done that video. I've also got a lot more experience with kel since I shot that video. I can honestly say that that PF9 is to date the worst gun I've owned uh, so far. Um, so with that being said, uh, I was actually interested in testing out one of these CMR30s because I think it's a really, really neat idea. Uh, the first time I got exposed to one of these was at SHOT Show, I think it was 2018. Um, I was out at the range day, we went by the kel booth and I saw this. Now I was familiar with the PMR30, the, the 22 Magnum pistol, um, but I hadn't heard of the carbine version of it. Now I guess it had been out for a while at that point. Um, it, you know, I guess just for me not paying attention to kel um, I didn't know that it existed. However, I thought it was a really neat idea. Now, by no means is 22 Magnum a even close to an intermediate cartridge. However, I do think that there is a role for some people for a lighter recoiling cartridge um, that kind of acts in that almost PDW role. Now, I don't think this is as armor piercing as 5.7, um, but it, it's kind of along those lines as far as applications for most people. Now, one of the other things that I thought was cool about this thing was the fact that you have a collapsible stock. So, even with a 16 inch barrel, with this stock collapsed, it's a pretty short, compact package. Now, there have been people who have SBR'd these um, to get an even smaller overall package, and I've heard those referred to as the poor man's MP7, since we can't get MP7s here in the States, um, at least not as civilians. Um, so again, I thought it was a really neat idea. However, given my experience with kel I wanted to get hands-on with one to see how quality control is going and what kind of, um, I guess reliability and consistency I could expect from one of these. Now, uh, I'm gonna preface by saying, and I know this is gonna upset a lot of people in the comments, I've only got about 300 rounds through this thing so far. And most of that is through about three different types of ammo. And so far, I apparently have not been able to find something this thing likes as soon as I think I do. In fact, uh, the way I was gonna open this video was doing a couple mag dumps with it and ran into significant issues during that process. And um, it's kind of unfortunate and goes to probably what I'm gonna be wrapping up with as far as my opinions on what kel is doing, but I'm gonna save that closer to the end of the video. So as far as the features on this thing goes, um, we have an ambidextrous charging handle up here, which is non-reciprocating, so the bolt's locked back, so this will move freely independent of the bolt carrier group, which is good because the way I typically have been holding onto this is with my support hand thumb kind of riding against that, almost using it as a forward hand stop. Um, and if it was reciprocating, obviously that would not be a good thing. Now you do have an entire rail section under here, so you could put a vertical grip, which would kind of get your thumb out of the way of that. Um, but as it is, it's kind of a cheese grater, but with the low recoil, it hasn't been an issue for me yet. Again, only through about 300 or so rounds. Um, up top, we have a complete uh, rail, uh, and it does come with the Magpul Embus polymer sights, um, which are perfectly functional. I'm a big fan of those. And then I've thrown up here my Sig Romeo 5 XDR that's currently in testing, and I've been trying to get it on as many things as I can. So it seemed like the perfect candidate for this. And it's actually been working really well when this thing is shooting reliably. I'm getting consistent hits on steel at 100 yards with really relatively no issues whatsoever. So that's, a, that's a, obviously a good thing. Our safety back here is ambidextrous, so um, very similar to the PMR30 uh, pistols where that safety is, as well as your slide lock. It's only on the one side, so you can drop uh, your bolt doing it that way. And of course, it does lock open on the last round fired, usually. Um, again, if everything's working the way it's supposed to, it'll lock open on the last round fired. Um, as far as the magazine release, it's a heel mag release, um, which, See, there, it was, it's supposed to lock back. I guess I didn't rack it hard enough uh, because it went home as soon as I pulled the mag out. Again, magazines, 30 rounds of 22 Magnum, which is, you know, definitely respectable, again, assuming it works, um, but they are polymer, and as you're loading, you can see the feed lips bending in and out, which is usually not indicative of a reliably feeding magazine. Again, that's kind of been our experience so far. 
And with that, you may be noticing a trend forming. Um, but with the heel mag release, it, I guess it's inherently ambidextrous because you can just as easily get to that left-handed or right-handed, but it's definitely not as high speed as a lot of modern firearms these days. So, um, you know, you could take it or leave it. Um, I, I'd kind of prefer a more traditional one, but I get with just the way that the magazines are manufactured that the uh, mechanism has to be in a different spot. So I guess that kind of is what it is. Um, normally this has just your traditional kel -Tec style um, texturing on the grip. Uh, the previous owner to this one had put these, I'm assuming, talon grips on there, um, which I'm not, not a huge fan of, but it's there, and I guess, by the way, the reason that this has a previous owner is uh, this is on loan from Mazama Sporting Goods, where I work in Eugene, Oregon, for me to do a little featurette video for them. Um, and then I figured I would do some uh, supplemental testing on top of that to bring you guys a video on it. So let's go ahead, roll in some more shooting footage, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about my opinions of this rifle and kind of what sort of reliability I've experienced so far. So as I said, I've only put about three different types of ammo through it. Part of that is what was provided by the store to do the little featurette video. And then I went ahead and put some more ammo on top of that. And um, I've been getting at least one malfunction per magazine, at least when I fully load it. Um, when I was doing 10 round magazines, um, I, I could sometimes get through a full mag without any malfunctions, but generally speaking about one malfunction per magazine. And it seems to happen more so at the very top of the magazine when there's more um, pressure, I guess. But even then, still getting a lot of failures to feed. Um, and some of that could be the bullet shapes. I've been using both hollow point style as well as like Hornady, v, or excuse me, CCI's VMAX, um, which is a nice pointed bullet. So if anything's gonna feed well, I would imagine that would be it. Um, but still we're having some issues. I'm sure that people watching this video have already commented with their favorite flavor of 22 mag that'll get this thing to cycle reliably. Um, and obviously this is just a sample of one. If you were to get one, it could be a lot more reliable than this one is. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of left wondering um, what, what this thing will like since you know it hasn't liked um, pretty much anything that I've put through it today. Now that being said, if you could get some reliably functioning ammo, this thing would be pretty slick. I mean, I've been hitting consistently at 100 yards and with the very low recoil of 22 mag, I've been able to just kind of sit there and dump rounds and have this thing stay really still, especially with a red dot, keeping those sights really well on target. Um, it, it's kind of a nice little fun range toy. And unfortunately, due to the reliability issues, that's kind of all I see this being. If you can actually get this thing running reliably, I would see this as a pretty viable option for a little like backpack gun. Again, when you have something this compact, or especially if you SBR and again, do the kind of poor man's um, MP7, this would be a pretty slick little setup. Again, 22 Magnum is, is not the most potent cartridge in the world, but it's also not nothing. And when you can get follow-up shots really, really fast like you can with this, I see there being a lot of potential in this, again, kind of that PDW role, as long as you're not actually worrying about armor piercing, which is what PDWs were supposed to be in the first place. So unfortunately, at least as of now, until I can find something that will cycle reliably through this, which um, probably won't happen since I have to give this back to the store for them to put this up used since we got this in used, um, it just kind of falls into that whole category of kel -Tec guns uh, where my opinion is I love the concepts. I love the theories. I love the innovation. I love the designs. I, it's just they leave a little bit to be desired on the actual execution of those ideas. The KSG is a really awesome idea. The war shotgun I've ever owned. The PF9 is an awesome little micro gun before micro guns were micro guns. Uh, the most painful gun I've ever shot really unreliable, and again, worst gun in total I've ever owned at this point in time. Um, this is a really, really neat idea, but the issues with reliability and function and all that just make it so I would not personally trust this thing 
with my life. Now, again, if you can find an ammo or you can get several hundred rounds going through this thing without any malfunctions, hey, by all means, do do with what that what you will and do whatever makes you happy. Um, it's just at this point in time, I can't, in good conscience at least, say that this would be a viable self-defense option, at least not for me. So while there's a lot of other really interesting Keltec designs out there, um, what is it, the R RDBs, the, the 5.56 guns that they're just coming out with, uh, or I guess a couple of years ago came out with, um, like the survival version of that that's really sleek and low profile, I love the idea of that. I just can't help but be hesitant to spend the money on something like that when I'm seeing issues like I am with this and the other Keltec products I've owned. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who say the Sub-2000 is the greatest thing in the world, um, but again, uh, my experience with Keltec products is that, again, while well, great in theory, just in practice, they just leave a little bit to be desired. Um, so, if you have one of these, let me know what type of ammo yours likes to run, and it might be different depending on who is saying it, so I'm actually interested to see what kind of feedback we get. Um, because I would love to get to the point where I can give this thing a glowing review. It's just at this point in time, with the three or so different types of ammo I shot through this thing today, um, I just can't, again, in good conscience, do that. So I do want to thank Mazama Sporting Goods for letting me bring this thing out to do some shooting with it. Again, it's one that I've wanted to get my hands on for a while because I love the concept behind it. I love the theory behind it. Um, and I'm glad I got to get some experience with it before dropping some of my own money on it. Um, I also want to say thanks to my patrons. Again, while well, Mazama Sporting Goods did provide me with ammo to do their little featurette video, in order to get a couple hundred more rounds through that, that came directly from contributions over on Patreon. Uh, because of that, we post all our content over there early. We also do some exclusive content. So anytime I'm out here on the range, I post update videos on the other guns going through testing. So like that Palmetto State uh, AK GF3 that is getting to 2,000 rounds now. Uh, my Midwest Industries rifle and some really interesting drum magazines that I'm out here testing. All that's going to be going up for patrons um, probably around the time that this video goes up. Um, so if that sounds interesting or you just want to financially support the channel as YouTube is actively demonetizing just about everything, uh, definitely head over to my Patreon. And we also just did a subscribe star account. Um, that's mostly for me to be able to support some of the uh, creators that I enjoy over there, um, but we'll probably start posting over there more consistently. So um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below. Again, if you have experience with one of these or you found the secret recipe that gets this thing to run reliably, please, please, please let me know. And maybe somewhere down the line, I might pick up another one of these to actually do a more in-depth testing. Um, so I guess do with that information what you will, uh, at least at, at where my opinion stands on this thing as it is right now. But anyway, with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.